Hey, hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kamoy. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I want to thank you guys so much. So today's video is going to be titled, What the Fuck Does Doing Your Spiritual Work Really Mean? Okay, um, I have been getting lots of questions about people that, um, uh, that says, you know, how do I do my spiritual work? Where do I begin? Um, how do I know I'm doing my spiritual work? How do I know I'm on the right path? Right? Okay. So today I am going to talk a little bit about what that really means and how it resonates with you as an individual. Okay. So we're going to touch on four things as we are going through this video. I will not be pulling cards in this video. This is just going to be, you know, me and you just chatting it up. Okay. Um, so first let me start by saying, um, self alchemy is going to be required along your spiritual journey. You're going to have to be able to, uh, you're going to have to be able to transmute things, which means you're going to have to be able to, uh, see the allegory and everything and then take all of maybe what you would consider to be painful stuff, traumas, disappointment, loss, regret, and transmute them into something positive. Okay. Or, or, or into something that you would want to experience, uh, more of. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is observation and why observation is key along your spiritual walk, okay? And why it is important for you to have an internal self-dialogue. That's why I named this channel for your inner voice because a lot of us don't pay attention to our inner voice, okay? Or the inner voices that's going on in our minds, okay? Now... The third thing we're going to talk about is your intuition. And this is important, guys, because if you cannot trust your intuition, like, and you can't trust your own inner compass and your own inner clock, like, you're going to be lost, okay? And then the final thing we're going to talk about in this video is taking action, okay, and why action is required. And um, we're also going to just make note that love is a action word, Okay. Uh, so let's just talk about a few things. Let's start with um, observation, uh, self alchemy, okay, and being able to transmute things. This is super important um, when you're on your spiritual walk because you're going to get all types of information that comes in. And sometimes when the information comes in, it can make you feel worthless or unworthy or like you're a sinner, or you're never going to accomplish anything. You anything and you're not going to be um able to attune or atone rather um for what you what you um consider to be your aka sins okay um so with that being said the first thing that you need to know is that all of your sins all of your disappointments all of your traumas all of your um your judgments okay all of these things, right? You will be able to take these things and use them for your um, for your embedment as your longest path, right? The one thing that you need to know, however, um, as you are doing this work, you are to do this work um, in observation of self, right? Um, and you are to do this work in observation of self, especially when it comes to um, uh, in the relationships that you have, right? Because one of the things you're going to find along the spiritual walk, or AKA the spiritual walk, I don't even know where I am right now, y'all, because seriously, um, you know, there's precepts upon precepts. There's layers upon layers upon layers upon layers, right? So if we're in an infinite um, universe, right, there's always going to be layers upon layers upon layers of information, right? So with that being said, um, self-alchemy, um, AKA self mastery, you're going to have to be able to take all of those layers and transmute them into your expansion or your growth. So once you have expanded, um, to a level along your walk, um, as a seeker, I really prefer a seeker, you know, <clears throat> versus the word spirituality at this point, right? Because I kind of feel like even spirituality at this point is so, um, even spirituality at this point has so many rules, right? So many boundaries, so many lip limitations. Okay, you have to meditate this way and you have to chant this way and you have to be a part of this organization, right? Still pulling you away from self. Not, not you know, it's, so it's still pulling you away from self when really the, the goal should be to teach you you are to go within always, first, 
always within first, okay? <clears throat> you're also going to get to a place where you understand that um, uh, self-mastery has nothing to do with anyone else but you um, being true to yourself, right? Everything is not for everybody. Everybody's not on the same vibration. Everybody's not on the same frequency. Everybody don't like the same music. Everybody don't like the same colors, you know. Um, so you have to understand that each and every one of us in this earthly realm and in this universe, right, right, is individually wonderful, amazing, and supreme, right? Each of us, even the ones that operate in the lower vibrational fuckery. Even the lower vibrational fuckery, like once you start to really understand things, it has a has a place. Even chaos has a place, right? So it's your choice whether or not you are going to entertain lower vibrational frequency, right? Or you're going to come up higher within self, not outside of self. This always has to go within self, right? So it was interesting because I, I, I'm subscribed to a channel, um, and I haven't really been watching any videos lately. Like I've been listening a lot and especially because we're on this 13 week journey. I am also taking this 13 weeks and, um, implementing and birthing new things within my earth, my reality. Cause this, this whole new earth that they've been talking about, this whole new, um, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, timeline that you've been seeing and we've been talking about, right? This is all within the process of self-alchemy, right? And self-mastery. This is all in the process about you being able to take all of your, your, your pain and all the bullshit and transmute it into something beautiful from within. Okay. It got to start from within first. Okay. So what does it mean to do the self-alchemy work? Let's just talk about that. What does it mean to, to transmutate? Let's talk about that for one second. <clears throat> First of all, when you start to transmutate, you understand that everything has an energetic pattern, right? And you understand. So let's think of a cheer for an example. Um, and I'm going to use this example from my book, um, The Alchemist, I think it's called The Magician. The, um, the modern guide um, magician or something like that. Um, I'll put the name in the description box below if any of you are interested. So let's talk about transmutation. And in this book, they use an example of a cheer, which I thought was a wonderful example to just, you know. So they ask you to envision a cheer, any cheer, right? Um, so for me, I'm going to envision my right cheer and I got the pillow, you know, my pretty pillow and I love the red because it represents the root and, uh, you know, like, so there's so much, you know, like so much meaning and power in this cheer. When I sit in this cheer, like this cheer is an anchor, right? For me. Okay. Now, um, in this exercise, they're asking you now to get rid of this red cheer. So now I'm no longer in this red cheer. Now I have to envision a whole new cheer, right? So immediately I am going to envision, oh, I like the, the, the feel of a king's man's light cheer. Tall back firm, maybe some um, beautiful golden buttons, you know. It could be red too, red leather too, but this time it's tall. It has like a crown head. It got um, buttons all over it, but there's gold buttons against the leather background. The armrest of gold, okay. So now they also ask you, now I'm going to get rid of my king's man cheer right so think of a next cheer right so my next cheer is beautiful oh my god it's a rich royal blue color and this one comes with an ottoman so i can put my fit my feet up right but the ottoman is strange because the ottoman kind of folds out from the side of the chair and it folds into like a love um, kind of like circle. So it's at the side of the chair. And when I press my little buttons, it folds into like a love shape heart, right? And it's blue, royal blue velvet, right? And it's comfortable with a soft back and I can kind of sit in it, right? Do you see how I've just transmuted cheer, the, just a cheer in three different ways? I literally took the essence of a chair because I know what it feels like to sit in the chair. I know what it feels like to put my back against the chair. So I know the energy of a chair. I have literally took all of that information and transmute the energy of the chair three times. Okay. 
So that's what it means to become a self-alchemist within self. You want to take your experiences and you get in the feeling of that experience. And, and honey, if that feeling don't fit, you, you switch that shit. And how do you switch it? You switch it through observation. Okay. This is going to be key. Okay. And, and it's observation without judgment. You can't judge a thing. See, this is why a lot of us are still stuck in lower vibrational things. And we are not vibrating within our true selves. Okay, I, I started to explain that I, I watched, I was watching this video and I, I stopped watching um, a lot of like um, uh, maybe um, conspiracy theories because I'm, you know, I can get up into all of that shit because I can find the allegory and everything, honey, okay? Um, and it also keeps me tapped in to see if what I've been picking up from the spiritual world um, resonates or what I've been picking up within from my inner world resonates, okay? Because remember, everything is your inner world, right? Everything is your inner world. If you are a radiation of light and, and the light expands outwardly, right? Everything comes out outwardly. If you're expanding out negative thoughts and if you're expanding out limit, limited thoughts, right? And you're a magnet. Guess what you're going to pull back to you, right? So as you start to transmute through observation, it has to be without judgment. You, you can't judge a thing. A chair is a chair, right? A chair is a chair, okay? A pillow is a pillow. A pillow feels different than a chair, okay? A bed is not a, a pillow, okay? So some beds are firm, right? Some beds are super, super, super soft. Some beds are water bed, right? But it's still a bed. But within the bed, you're able to transmute the essence of the bed, right? Into whatever energy or to purchase a bed into whatever energy best fits you, the individual, okay? So this is how you got to look at it when you're observing without judgment, right? You are not going to judge one bed from the next, one chair from the next. It's just what works for you may not work for me, okay? So when you start to operate in... What works for you may not work for me, right? Then you don't really have to get caught up in choosing sides of anything because everything is neutral. Everything is neutral, okay? In this third dimensional earthly realm, right, we are all here to experience self. You're not here to experience anything else. You're here to experience self. And you can't experience self without relationship with other people, right? Other people will reflect you back to you always. And if you are wise enough, they will also lead you back to you always, okay? Remember that in every relationship that you interact with, you are the common denominator. You show or teach people how to treat you hands down. By how? By what? By what means? Now, how do I do that? By being an example. How are you treating yourself? And I'm not telling y'all nothing I, I, I haven't had to learn. I haven't had to experience. Like, I'm walking through some shit in real time, honey. Real time. But I've also had 20 years of experience. I know what it feels like to go searching for a career so you can find feel like you're worthy. Spent, you know, $30,000 plus still paying off student loans. Plus, just to get a degree, just to get a license, to prove myself to people because I didn't trust my own inner knowing, my own inner wisdom. You know, some of the things that some of you are, are, are even feeling out this, uh, you know, and I, I like to call, call it sci-fi. Some of you are feeling sci-fi-ish things that you can't really um, even comprehend sometimes if you try to fit it into this third dimensional realm, right? And, and then, you know, we go searching because we're seekers, right? But you go searching and please understand when you're when you're when you're um, going through this alchemic process through um, transmutation um, via observation with non-judgment. Right. You understand that every level that you get to, you can't judge another person. And this is important. And I use this analogy all the time. Because um, my son's a gamers. OK. Uh, you, and, and, and it's interesting, and, and and I might just do a video on the whole gaming scenario, because this whole structure shit is a game, okay? This whole structure shit is a game, all right? I can start off at level one, you can start off at level one, you know, and level one is easy, honey, and we both master level one. We are masters of level one. Man, we jump to level two and nothing. Master level two and nothing. 
Now we to level three. Okay, level three a little bit more difficult, but we still got this shit, right? Mm, boom. We out of level three. Me and you, we out of level three. We, we, bop, 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 bop. Now we level four, the both of us. Hmm. I find level four to be a lot more laid back and easy. I'm just coasting through level four, you know, because some of my life experiences have made me understand what all the fuckery is in level four and what all the beauty is in level four. So I'm just skating through level four. However, you, my dear, may have a difficult time in level four. And I can sit, I can judge, I can laugh, I can tell you, what the fuck, you know, you should know this. That I, I can do all of that, right? Right? Because I feel, my ego lets me know, shit, level four, I got this shit, this shit is easy. Like, I can get to level five in no time, you know? You want my help, you know? You know, I could offer help, but still be my ego about offering my help. You may refuse my help because you and your ego about your shit, right? When really there was a nexus point that we could have connected and maybe help each other to get to level five. But we're going to get that to that in a totally different video. So the point that I'm trying to make here is if I'm judging you and we're both in level four because I'm coasting through level four. And I get to level five and left your ass in level four. I'm looking back better than you. You got this. You don't got that. Right. And you get to level five. And then we both make it to level six. Level four was a little bit of challenge for you. Now we both in level five. You get to level six. I get to level six. But in level six, you don't learn some shit from level four that I didn't learn. Because I didn't have to go through all of the struggles of child, the tribulations and shit in level four. Because remember, I coast through level four. Now you at six, right? Remember I thought I was better than you? Remember I thought I knew it all? Remember I was judging you, right? We both at level six now. At level six, I'm fucking struggling, y'all. Fucking struggling my ass off. But you, you coasting through level six. But you've learned, ain't no judgment here. Because everybody has their turn. Everybody got to go through something. I don't care who the fucks you is. I don't care how much money you have. Everybody got to go through some shit. That's just the game here in this realm. Ain't nobody fucking separated from that shit. Ain't nobody separated from that shit. Everybody. Got some shit they need to conquer. Everybody got some mountains they need to manifest moving, okay? Everybody, okay? We talk about glitches, and <laughs> there's been a lot of glitches, all right? Let me tell you the ultimate glitch. The ultimate glitch is you not being able to tap into you, okay? Like I was saying, I was watching this video, and I know I keep jumping around. That's why I got notes, y'all. That's why I got notes. I was watching this video, um, which kind of inspired me to even make this video because uh, I think they were able, able to articulate some things that I've been feeling myself personally within this personal walk, right? Uh, from since I've launched this YouTube channel, there's been some um, spiritual gifts that has awakened in. There's been some DNA transformation that has taken place. Um, and my girl, Kelly... Uh, she would always say to me, it's time for you to come down. It's time for you to come down in this realm. It's time for you to come down. It's time for you up here too much. You need to come down. And I was stuck in this place like, fuck, I don't like being down here. Like, this shit, like, all this fuckery that's going on in this third dimensional world, like, I don't really feel like I want to be here, right? So as I started, to, she said, okay, yeah, I get that. But you, we, you, you need to be here. You can't be up there because if you're up there, you're not present here, right? You're not, and you're here right now. So you can't be up there right now. You need to come down and be present now, here. Okay. What I've learned, y'all, is I've spent so much time up um, in the spiritual, a.k.a. realms, right? Or so much time um, in the inner me, right? Getting to know my inner world, my inner self that I was not living <laughs> right out here I was not living out here right so I've learned a few things observation is going to be key as you were doing this transmutation but as you're doing this transmutation you're still which is going to take us into um as you're doing this observation without judgment right it's going to take us right into intuition okay as you start to trust your intuition as you start to trust yourself right and you can't remember. You can't really do this first without paying attention to how a chair feels. That has arms and a firm back. Soft 
cushion on your butt, you know, or um, maybe a broad back that you can sprawl out in and just, you know, uh, a bed that's a little bit more firm because you have back issues or a bed that's so soft and you can just mold to your body. A pillow that's fluffy with feathers can, or one that's full of cotton, you know. As you start to distinguish between the feel of the thing, because everything is fucking energy. You know what it feels like to be uncomfortable. Um, and not uncomfortable because uh, you don't trust yourself. But uncomfortable because the energy that you're sitting in don't feel like the chair that you're, you're used to. That energy feels more like a hard bed that hurts your back. Right. And as you observe yourself, because then that energy then becomes, excuse me, that energy then becomes your situation of, OK, I know this feeling. I start to feel this way when I'm getting anxious about maybe not having enough, uh, not being enough, um, not 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 living enough. Not meeting such and such expectations. That's what this chair feels like. This chair feels like I'm not meeting expectations. This chair feels like I'm not worthy. When you start to feel what that essence feels like, then you start to be able to transmute that energy. Okay, I don't like the way this feels like. Okay, this, this lack of not having enough don't feel right. It make my back hurt. I think I'm going to go out and just transmute and get me a whole new chair. You know, okay. Oh, yeah. This back is taller. The armrest. Oh, I could just. Ooh, it even got a little recliner. I could put my foot up. Fucks. Comfortable. I like this chair. And this chair right here, this chair is worthiness. This chair right here, this is me having enough. Right? That's the essence. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about energy. And this is how you're transmuting shit. This is how you're doing your spiritual work. You need to know the energy of what you're sitting in. Okay? What are you sitting in? What is that observation, non-judgment telling you? Every time I feel like I don't sat in a chair where anxiety comes up, that's because I don't feel worthy. Then you start to ask yourself, well, why don't I feel worthy? Because what you're going to realize is that there's different anchors placed within your life that programs you to feel the way you feel. You just don't wake up feeling the fucking way you feel. Okay, you're either constantly feeding yourself because you programmed some shit or some experience that was supposed to teach you some shit and you're going to take the time to learn a lesson. So there's still residue there that you got to go back and heal. You cannot get to the other side without really going within yourself. Can't nobody teach you this shit. This shit, can't nobody teach you your spiritual walk. They can guide you within self, but you're going to have to travel that journey within. Don't nobody got the answers for you. I can read cards all day and I can tell you the energy that I can see. And I can give you fucking instructions, like good fucking instructions. But guess what? If you're not, if you're not talking to your inner you, if you're not doing that alchemic work, finding out what energy you sitting in, finding out what energy you attracting, if you're not doing that, and you not observation, um, using observation without judging anything in the spiritual world. You can't judge anything. You filter. That's what you do. Because the minute you judge a thing, you anchor that thing. No, 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 no. You filter. Does this chair feel right? Okay. No, this ain't my chair. Next. You're not judging that other chair because it didn't feel right. Okay. Next. Next chair, please. Okay. So. Once you start to understand the energy and you start to understand that you can transmute things and you're doing this through observation without non-judgment, next takes us into number three, your intuition. And we're going to say that um, most people don't even know how to trust their, their, their intuition, that gut feeling within. And I'm not going to get into this in this video because I do have a client that I need to jump off and get this. So let me start to wrap this up. Um, you have an obligation to self to trust your gut in this season that we're in. You have an obligation to self to trust your gut in the season we're in. <laughs> Please do. Please understand that. And how you trust in your intuition. Your intuition or your higher self is that voice that tells you, okay, I can't find my car keys. And the voice tells you, go look in the kitchen 
on the counter next to the fridge. But you don't listen to that voice. You go check your pockets for the pants that you had on. You go check your pocketbook because you kind of figure you might have dumped them in your pocketbook. You take a walk around the house. And then you remembered or you hear the voice again say, go look on the counter in the kitchen next to the refrigerator. And you go and your keys are right there. Right? There's a silent voice that speaks to you. A very silent voice that speaks to you. That nudges you. That's your gut. Or have you ever done something and then you, um, have you ever heard that that voice tell you not to do something or maybe to do something and then you don't listen? And then as soon as you don't listen, you're like, fuck, I should have trusted my gut. That's your intuition. There is a connection with self, right, that you cannot avoid, okay, in this walk right here. You can't. All right. And can't nobody give that to you. You won't have to take that for yourself. That's because that's your spiritual sovereignty right there. That's the place that helps you to manifest everything right there. And if you're not listening to that voice, everybody else just sends out a signal for you to either resonate and confirm your own shit or to trap you uh, and keep you bound in their own. Um, I want to say unfolding of their own movie. OK, please understand that. All right. This is why you need to understand what your triggers are. Else then you become an emotional puppet to everybody. And that's including astrology, numerology, um, sacred geometry. When you understand that you are all that shit. Okay. D do you know that you guys, you have the power to change your natal chart? And yes, it is written in the stars. But honey, you can change that shit. Okay, you are not to get caught up so much in I am a Scorpio, I am a Cancer, I am an Aquarius, right? You are not to get caught up in, in all of those energetic patterns so much, right? But to understand the energetic patterns and the frequency in which they vibrate on so you can transmute and jump ship when you want to. Jump and ship changing states, enjoying your experience. So what I have learned by coming down here in this third dimensional realm, there are some things that I need to adjust within self. There's, there's some things that personally, like physically, that I need to adjust with in self, okay? So now that I've transmutated and see what something things feel like and I've been observing without non-judgment, now I'm trusting my intuition, I got to write a list. Because if I write a list, shit ain't getting done, okay? Because I can be up here. So this list keeps me anchored here, right? So you want to be able to trust your intuition. And if my intuition tells me da-da-da-da-da, I, I get to writing. I got labels, y'all. Like, this is not a joke. And I just had to buy this notebook, too. And I'm already, like, thick in. I think I just bought this, like, last week. Okay? So, please understand. Okay? You're going to have to trust that gut within. And you're going to have to teach yourself how to, um, uh, I want to say, um, hear that voice more clearly than you hear anyone else. And that's really spending time with yourself. Because can't nobody give that to you. You're going to have to give that to yourself. Okay. Now, once you start to be able to understand energy and then be able to transmute energy because you're observe you're observing without non judgment and you're paying attention to your intuition, you're gonna get to a place where now you need to take action. Okay. You are not going to be able to maintain um a um I wanna say a true experience here, right? Where all things are truly beautiful. <laughs> really you, you you know when they talked about creating that new earth please remember it's you creating a new consciousness it's you reconnecting with self you don't have to live in other people's bubbles of not having enough and not being enough and all of the negative shit that's going on out there you don't okay you don't i do not watch local news and i don't watch that for a reason okay i don't i i i, I tend to watch here yeah, more like this you know M uh, cnn and Maybe um, MSNBC and BBC. And that is really because that's me getting a post on the collective and studying the energetic patterns. Not for me to get caught up in all of that shit. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. So after you start to pay attention to your intuition and you are able to trust your intuition. And how do you trust your intuition? By listening. Spending time with yourself. Okay. Trusting that you are always guided. Right. And, 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 and this is even whether you are aware or not, you're always guided. So why not take control of how you're guided and by whom you're guided by? Right. When we talk about angels, a.k.a. angle of light, um, information, sound codes, 
okay? Please understand that many, like I said, on one level, what we deem to be angels on another level is angles of light frequencies, okay? Please understand that, all right? So you get to a place that after you trust your intuition and after you trust, you begin to trust your inner self, then you are more prone to take action because you're going to have to take responsibility for your life. Can't nobody do that for you. If you are awakening... If you are ascending, right, you're going to have to take action and take responsibility of your own life. And you're going to have to do that on the highest frequency within this earthly realm, which is love. Okay. Heart shock for work is going to be key. That is your true brain. That is your compass. Okay. And your heart chakra is going to be speaking to your sacral chakra, which is your gut. Okay, so your heart chakra is going to be speaking to all three of your lower chakras. It's going to be speaking to your root chakra, your sacral chakra, as well as your solar plexus. So those, that's what you need to take dominion of, your lower chakras. Take dominion of your lower chakras. Okay, that's where your fear, your anxiety, your limitations, that is where all of that dense, heavy energy lies. And you have to be able to take control of that. That means being taken, take responsibility for your actions. That means take responsibility for how you, um, for the words that you speak. That means take responsibility for your own inner guidance and knowing. Don't trust that to anybody else. The way this works is if it resonates with you and it confirms within your spirit, this is where you're supposed to go. That's you having a conversation with yourself. But there should never be a point where you are not guided by self. This is why I said my videos are not for everybody. Not everybody's on my frequency. Not everybody's on my vibration. Not everybody's seeking the things that I'm seeking. Okay? So, to wrap this up, all right, what the fuck does it mean when you're really doing your spiritual work? It means, one, being able to do self-mastery and self-alchemy, which is transmuting things, right? Through observation without judgment by paying attention to your intuition and then being able to take action. Okay? All right, guys. I hope this video is helpful. Okay? Um, 333 three, three on the clock, y'all. That's going to be tomorrow's daily vibration number. That's 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 it. It's a wrap. Writing that down. Three, three, three. Okay. All right, my loves. I love you guys much. Okay. Um, the next um uh, round of videos that I will be posting is love languages for all of the signs. I just got, I believe, the ear signs to do. Um, for Pluto goes direct. Okay. Uh, and I will be uploading that. Um by the weekend and then after that last batch of video goes up for Pluto goes direct I'm going to take it back to love languages because you're gonna to have to understand yourself honey some of you are yeah some of you don't even know your love language some of you are wondering why you don't have um healthy relationships or why your relationships feel like they're, they're not aligned right because you could be speaking one love language and your partner could be speaking the next and you are operating and giving love in your lang love language and they're doing the same so once you start to understand your love language and they start to understand their love language and then they are you know you y'all yeah okay so that would be the next string of videos that we'll be doing is love languages okay all right my loves I love you guys much. Um, be kind to yourself. Love yourself. Um, do something kind for yourself. 333 on the timer now, okay? And that is going to be what we <laughs> focus on tomorrow. I'm going to say that again. Um, all right. Anything that you need to know about me, you will be able to find in the description box below, okay? So if you need to schedule an appointment or you need to know what type of reading slash coaching sessions that I do, you can find them in the description box below and the donation amounts. You can also find um, information about my girl, um, Kim Warner. She does natal charts as well as uh, natal charts um, reports. Uh, which kind of tells you exactly relationship, love, and partnership-wise how that aligns within your personal walk. And remember, you are able to change your natal chart, honey. Okay, but you can't know what to do unless you get the information, okay? And then I wanted to show you guys these. My girl Michelle sent me this. This is my sun catcher. And I put this up in the window, and when it reflects, it reflects such beautiful light. So this is my, um, my chakra sun catcher. Um... All seven chakras. And this is my root chakra, the sun catcher. And then this is my heart sun, sun catcher, my heart chakra sun catcher. These are beautiful. And this is my throat chakra. And then I have also um my third eye, but my third eye is actually um, by the window. And this is my, um, my throat sun catcher. 
All right, so um, my girl Michelle from Let's Start Fresh, she's the one that made these for me. I will also put her information in the description box below if you guys are interested. Um, you can go ahead and email her directly. All right, guys, I love you guys, and I'm going to go ahead and upload this video now. I hope it is helpful. Please drop comments. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in your individuals as well as the daily tomorrow. Bye, guys.